Welcome to the Creative Digital Transformation webinar on the incubation of ideas. What does that even mean? Basically, incubation means the process from the raw first idea to the implementation of the final product. Imagine yourself as the hen who sits on the egg until the chick hatches. Does the chick look like the egg? Not at all. However, it would not come to life without it. It's the same with ideas. The original idea might look different from the final product, but it is vital on the way there and it's where it all starts. Let's not get into the chicken and the egg discussion now, but I hear you. In this webinar, we will show you some methods and strategies of how to come up with ideas, how to keep track of them, how to adapt them when necessary, and how to make them reality. As project managers here at Visama Bildungsgesellschaft in Germany, we constantly have to come up with ideas and the ways to implement them in many different contexts. So let's start asking around the office what some of the favorite strategies and methods are. So my ideas usually spring from the needs that I see around me. So whenever we have a course and we have a discussion and topics are coming up that we cannot cover this day, then, you know, this might be an exercise or this might be a whole seminar itself or maybe even a whole course for itself. So, yeah, I feel like ideas can come in many shapes and sizes. Okay, so I have two go-to strategy when I'm faced with a task that I must um, tackle. The first is to search the web for um, similar situations and how they were handled. For example, if I had to write a report on a certain topic, um, I just search the web um, for information and see um, how subject or how, they, yeah, how it was handled. And if I don't find this approach to be viable, I would talk to um, a couple of my colleagues or friends that I think um, have more knowledge on how to approach uh, the issue. Um, this will be usually two to three people and um, this will be enough for me to understand you know, how to get going. So I think it's you have to work a bit to, <laughs> to actually, uh, so that the ideas come to you. And um, for me, it's a little bit like, I feel like a monkey that's swinging from tree to tree. Um, there's some piece of material that's interesting to me. And uh, it may, is maybe concerned with the topic I'm working on. So I... Um, I read it or I listen to it, could be a podcast, could be, uh, could be a YouTube video. And then there's something else that sparks my interest. So I uh, leave the old material, go to the new one. Um, I um, just browse a little bit uh, through that and then swing on to the next tree like a monkey. I don't stick much to one material. It's just everything that I find attractive at first glance. I um, grab it, I look at it, and if I find something more interesting, I go on. Um, I think that's for me just a method to uh, get as much input as possible and um, not with an, uh, any kind of academic attitude. <laughs> it's just it's really more like that seems interesting to me or that doesn't seem interesting to me. And um, then I get a collection of uh, things or I get a, like a panorama of um, things that surround that topic. Um, yeah, where uh, there is then something that um, shines out to me and I think, oh, this could be developed further. Before the creativity that breeds ideas, there is knowledge. If you want to be able to think outside the box, you need to know what your box is. Secondly, broaden your horizon and be interested in the world around you. The more you know, the more likely it is that you make a new connection, that you are able to think of a new solution. In short, that you have an idea. If you are faced with a problem and need an idea to solve it, the first step is always to get to know as much as you can about the situation. Understand where you are at, understand where you want to go, understand that there is a whole universe of possible solutions. When you feel like you have a grasp on the knowledge, Try to come up with as many solutions, ways, ideas as you can possibly manage. They don't have to be realistic, yet. Shoot for the stars. What else is out there? And then, leave it. Step away from the problem and your ideas. Give yourself a break. 
Think about something else. Busy yourself with easy tasks that have nothing to do with your idea and leave it to your unconscious to mull everything over. How often have people told you, sleep on it, do it? Suddenly, there it is. Probably when you are falling asleep or doing something entirely different, the pieces will fall into place. Ideally, you have a piece of paper and a pen ready to write it down. Trust me. If you don't, grab your phone and leave yourself a memo. Or send a message to a friend or colleague. Write an email, but make sure to note it down. And now we're ready for incubation. You lay your egg. Yes, we're still doing that. And now hatch the chick. But wait. What happens if there is more than one idea? I feel like ideas come in the weirdest times, weirdest places, you never know. So um, for me, it's the bus or the train. This is where I get my ideas. It's not the shower how for many other people. Uh, so yeah, so usually I have my phone with me. So this is where I keep my ideas. I have a notes app on my phone and whenever I have something then I tap, tap, tap away, and then I sort it in the folder, and then that's it. And then you have everything you need, and you can even get it on your computer if you need to. For me personally, there cannot be too many eggs or too many ideas, because I am the one that is um, in charge of the process of collecting uh, the ideas. So once I've collected enough ideas, I simply uh, stop looking for more ideas. Usually a handful of ideas of, yeah, will be enough for me um, to get an idea of how to proceed. I think at this point in the process there can't be too many eggs in the basket. The basket can be big and the eggs can be of any shape and they don't need to make sense, <laughs> the combination of them. So what I do is I um, draw a mind map. Map. I actually do that. So um, I do it with paper and pen. I know there are great tools and apps out there to do it digitally, but for me it's just necessary to have that uh, tactile aspect of it. I also use colors, I use markers, I also um, sometimes do little sketches uh, with it. Um, that just helps me to, if I visualize it, it's better for me to remember certain things and make connections. And um, usually there's not much in the middle because I don't know yet what I'm really looking for. Uh, but what the mind map works well for, I think, is to make connections, to see which, which ideas make a good combination, um, which ideas maybe are very solitary and you can't find, I mean, you've heard of it, you heard of that special thing and it, um, it, it totally fascinates you but then it's totally empty there in the space and you can't uh, link it to anything else. You can also see what are totally opposite ideas. Maybe um, you know, okay, you will have to decide at one point to go that direction or that direction. And for me, a mind map really makes that um, uh, visually appear for me, those kind of structures. In the beginning of the process, there is no such thing as too many ideas. Certainly, at some point we need to decide and weed out some of the approaches that will not work. Here, it helps if you have a strategy to put your ideas into context and give them structure. As always, it's a good thing to bounce your ideas off other people. Even in this early stage, it might be helpful to get feedback and insight from someone else. Also, if you have to explain your idea to somebody, you will quickly see where the idea still has flaws or where it already works really well. So, uh, my goal is to create something that is of use for many people as possible and everybody is different and everyone has different needs. So, if you keep your clients uh, and your goals in mind, and you know, my goals and my or my goal is to make my clients and my courses happy, then adaptation is key and that is something that is absolutely necessary and very useful. So it's nothing annoying, it is just what we have to do as trainers. And it, I feel like it can also be a very fun challenge. I don't expect um, the original idea to stay the same throughout the whole process of implementing it. 
Um, to me, adapting the idea is an essential part of the whole process. And that reminds me of a sentence that um, I was told when I did my further training to become a systemic coach. And that was to not fall in love with your own hypothesis. And I think it's the same with ideas. Don't fall in love with the original ideas. Um, be open to reasonable arguments and m make changes accordingly. I think this will help you a lot to create the best possible solution. I think that's a good point to talk to someone. I think um, if you've been thinking about an idea too long for yourself, it sometimes um, morphs into something very unflexible. Um, so it's good to have someone to bounce the idea off and um, I think any way the other person reacts it's gonna be very helpful when the person loves the idea there's maybe um, new aspects of it that you didn't even think of that's certainly gonna help you incubate the idea but also if the person is um, asks very criti critical questions um, first of all, your idea might be really not useful. <laughs> so if the arguments of the other person are very good, that, um, that's maybe a good point to, to um, change your plan. But sometimes I've also experienced that I heard the critical ideas of the other person and it just made me think more thoroughly about the idea, made me think more thoroughly about um, my argumentation, argumentation for it. Um, I came up with... Um, new good reasons to incubate that idea and then um, yeah just this argument this little debate um, can really yeah make the idea richer in any way for a successful incubation it is really important that you understand it as a process the idea you start out with might just be that a start but it may develop into something very different through the incubation phase it is therefore vital that you remind yourself of the ultimate goal that you had this idea for and, again, involve other people in the process. Take advantage of other perspectives and other people's expertise. However, you are also allowed to be critical with their critique. Are they right or do you just need a better argument for your idea? Find the balance. Be open to change but also willing to fight for good ideas. I love creating mind maps or short presentations because I need to see how things are written out. So this is for me the perfect way to sketch out ideas. I think there are many different ways you can do it, but this is mine. And um, what I also think is very useful if you talk to colleagues or other professionals on your field or in your field. Um, yeah because it always helps to discuss or even challenge your ideas because this is or thinking together with other people always helps us you know getting other ideas that we might not have thought about uh, on our own when i want to implement an idea i make a list of all the foreseeable steps that need to be taken to implement the idea and that means every teeny tiny step because um, sometimes when we face uh, a challenge it can be super hard to, to get going and if you yeah, separate it by, into really small parts you get an impression of making progress as you move through the steps and yeah don't be afraid to start the process at this point, I usually start with a good old Word document. Um, I look again at all the sources I've already browsed through very superficially. So in that Word document, um, I for sure write down all the sources that somehow make sense uh, with, and I write also sentence like, uh, okay, in this source, this is interesting. So I just um, give a little context to the sources. And then for the most interesting sources, I read them thoroughly. I just take out the focal points that um, 
uh, somehow add to my uh, to my idea and then after I've looked through some articles or reports or things like that interviews um, there's kind of a structure showing up I think uh, usually see okay these are arguments for it um, uh, this is gonna be the um, rationale that's gonna be um, uh, gonna be the threat in your idea or um, you find best practices things like this and I just um, like through reading the material very thoroughly and connecting the things um, that I found interesting before um, usually it comes it turns into a structure itself um, and in the end I have a document of sometimes maybe uh, depends on the complexity but it could be 10 pages or sometimes it's really it's longer because I also like I um, I copy and paste uh, some um, quotes that are interesting to me so I find them quickly things like that um, yeah and um, usually also like if you have to write maybe a proposal um, an application proposal or something like that uh, it's easy for me to come back to that document and I find the threads uh, quite quickly. Uh, it's for me, it's the like collection of um, for the whole concept that I'm developing. You might have noticed that everyone works differently when it comes to the incubation process. Find out what works for you to keep track of things and thoughts and concepts that will make it easier to draw connections that are necessary to actually make your idea a reality. And again, share your current status of the idea with people. Not only with people who are also involved in the problem you want to solve. Tell people outside of your box about your idea as well. They will have a new perspective and bring new knowledge into the game. But don't forget experts either. They will help you with more specific insight to shape your idea into something viable and stronger. Be open to feedback and critique. Yes, it might hurt sometimes, but those are growing pains. Think about the chick. However, we understand that this also requires a certain level of trust among you and the people you're talking to. So foster a collaborative environment at work. This incubation environment should have flat hierarchies and encourage the free exchange of ideas and information. Be willing to share your idea might inspire a whole new concept in connection with the idea of another colleague. Also, if you share your idea, it is more likely to be remembered. Thank you for watching. If you are looking for a specific and practical method for incubating your idea, watch the Creative Digital Transformation webinar by Matera Hub on the Creative Project Canva. Thank you for watching. If you are looking for a specific and practical method for incubating your idea, Watch the Creative Digital Transformation webinar by Matera Hub on the Creative Project Canva.